Everybody come and catch the show. You and Tad jokes, they got plenty of those. So relax and listen on as Tad and Kyle start the apocalypse. Yeah. Hey, everybody. We're back again. Woo, again. We haven't been canceled yet. Well, I mean, that's up to us, I guess. Because coming from the Dev and Kyle podcast network, the flagship podcast, Dev and Kyle start the apocalypse. <laughs> the number one rated show on the network. Thanks to you listeners. Speaking of things our listeners don't know anything about, we're back after a three-day hiatus. We're addicted to recording again. Wow. 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 It's like last, crack. Last time it was six weeks. This time it's 72 hours. That's what you can learn to expect from us listeners. I mean, we, we have a... Quick refractory time for recording now. Record for recording. Yeah, just for yeah, recording. For, just for recording. <laughs> just for recording. I don't know what else that might apply with, but this is, uh, I'm talking about recording here. Speaking of quick comebacks, you went to the Derby and we didn't talk about that yet. I, I didn't go to the actual Derby this oh, year. I've, actual I've derby. been okay. to the Derby once, but I went to Thurby, which is like the locals version of Derby. It's on thursday okay and it's the same kind of you know parade of people dressing like their southern debutantes and showing off fascinators and hats and shit all that all that you know frou-frou stuff so of course i i wore a suit and we got free tickets to an all-inclusive all you can drink all you can eat tent that was on the first and second turn crap you but you can't complain about free domestic beer. Do they run a race on Thurby? That's not a. There's some kind of stakes race that's, you know, a couple hundred grand. I really didn't pay attention. I was just betting kind of randomly that day. I drank way too much too fast. Plus, it was Cinco de Mayo. So after Thurby, we went out for margaritas and don't really remember much of the day. But here and there in pieces, I I know I lost and I do remember because it was so bad and I'm still kind of angry about it, even though I'm more angry about what I didn't bet on Derby, which I'll get to in a second. I went to the betting machine. I put in $20. I was trying to bet a Superfecta straight, which means for those aren't familiar with horse betting, That means you pick the first, second, third, and fourth horse in order. So win, play, show, and fourth place. Okay. That sounds hard. Out of eight horses, right? uh, This was out of 10 horses. Wow. Total, I believe. Yeah, 10 horses were in the the field. It was originally 11, but one of them scratched. So 10 horses. I was picking one, two, three, four. I put my bet in. This was about a minute and a half before they put the horses in the gate. So I'm hitting the button to print the ticket. It won't do it. So I take it out, go to another machine, do the same thing. I'm hitting print ticket, print ticket. And then I hear the race go off. Oh. And I'm like, well, all right, no big deal. Sure. I probably would have won anyway. You wouldn't have hit it anyway. I, I would have just thrown 20 bucks away. So I go into the tent and I go up to my best friend, this area. And I say, I picked this, these horses win play show fourth place for a super effect straight 20 bucks. If it hits, I might just go puke my brains out and try to drown myself in the poor what, pots over there. What are the odds on a, on a super effect straight like that? It's gotta be hundreds to one. I mean, normal odds. I, I'm not even sure, but then you have to equate the odd for the horse in there yeah. too. That's what so, I'm saying. Your 20 bucks is worth thousands. If you hit it, right? I don't have much of a strategy with my horse gambling. Slight addiction, uh, although I only really bet Derby Week. That's the only time. It's the only races that you really care about. It's not really, a, it's not really an addiction if you do it once a year. Yeah, well, three days out of the year. Maybe four if you go. That's like saying I'm addicted to my birthday. Like I just I do it the one year. I, I have to say, we, we started this thing called Downs After Dark, where they do night races during the summer. Hmm. And I, for a while there, I went to every single event that was there and it was like they would do it thursdays fridays saturdays and 
it was crazy. But that was back in my early 30s, late 20s. So I haven't been to one in a while. But I've, 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 I'm probably going to go back this year. The, the third this year this Thurby kind of re-energized my love for debauchery at the track. <laughs> I mean, the the one time I went to actual Derby, it was a monsoon, and I lost a ticket for a trifecta because I got a little too inebriated in the infield. Did it? Did that hit too, and you didn't have it? Yeah, <laughs> I, I've had really bad luck. You've successfully told me two stories about gambling where where you have through a happenstance have missed out on it's got to be 10 large in these two stories only yeah it, it would have been 10 grand for that superfecta on thurby and <laughs> yeah i was just like fuck fuck me well I, I felt like okay at first because it showed the payouts and it said 48 dollars or 49 dollars for the superfecta and i was like what i can't man I, I was like that's not much at all and then I did the math even there. I'm like, well, it's a lot of less than a grand. Not, yeah, you know, that sucks, but not that big a deal. And <laughs> then I realized that was the ten cent payout. Ten a dime, if you hit it, would pay forty nine dollars, and you were going to put twenty bucks on it. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. But what's even worse? Oh, there's it's worse. even worse. It gets oh, worse. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it gets it gets worse. Wait. <laughs> It's so much worse. On Derby, I went to a Derby party, which is the thing to do here as a local. Not many people actually go to Derby here. It's more for out of towners. It's for parties. Like, yeah. Here's it, so here's what I know about the Derby: uh, horses, hats, and mint juleps. That's it. That's the extent of my knowledge. And now I know about parties. And mint juleps suck. Never, I don't think I've ever had one. I mean, you you can make one that's okay at home. But the ones you get at the track are awful. They're pre-made. On Thurby, when I said everything was all inclusive, that was just domestic beer and wine. To get a mint julep or a yeah a lily, it's a vodka and like pink lemonade kind of mix, and something okay. else. It's it's pretty good. Or a mint julep. They were seventeen dollars, and they oh, were in plastic cups, like eight ounce cups. That's like partying in Scottsdale. And they didn't even fill it all the way up. Usually. When you would go to the track during derby time and you would get one of those drinks, you would get it in a glass, an actual glass. There's derby glasses that come out every year that have all the previous winners. And oh. then what derby this year they, is. Do they have to make the cup bigger and bigger and bigger every year as they add more horses to get them all to fit? Or do they decrease the font? They, they decrease the font and, oh. you know, take less of the logo that's on there. So the logo keeps getting smaller. Not like the Stanley Cup. Where they just keep putting names on it and it's still this big. I mean, there's still room so far. So that they haven't had to shrink it too much. You can still have legible names on there for now. I went to a beer garden event and it was, I was so pissed about this. It was like $8 beers or if you bought the commemorative beer stein for 12 bucks, then it said beer stein fills $16. I was like, oh, okay, this is this is gonna be a great night. So I buy the yeah. twelve bucks, I get the beer stein, I get my beer stein fill, and I give it to them, and they're like, yeah, it's two tickets for the beer stein fill. And I'm like, okay, so I give yeah. them the two tickets. They go and they pour two eight dollar beers, and then they hand them to me, and I'm like, what are these? I'm like, I needed a beer stein fill. And they're like, no, uh, because of liquor laws, we can only serve it to you in these cups, and then like you can just pour it in your cup. And I was like, but that's not gonna fill it, and they were like, yeah. Uh, it's just two beers. I'm like, oh my God, this is the worst event I've ever been to. But it was like a dumb thing put on the Rotary Club. And I saw so I just drank my beer and it was fine. But yeah, I mean, when you're a captive audience. Yeah, they got me inside a city park with some fences <laughs> and, a, and a German beer garden. You're like, what are you going to do? You want to drink? Pay up. There, There's no real way around it. Unfortunately. Speaking of ways that the city lets me down, what do you think about jury duty? You ever had to do it? I've never had to do it. Have you ever had to even go at all? No, I've never even been summoned. So I, I don't know what it's like. Okay. I am desperate for jury duty. Like I've had all the jobs I've ever had when I've gotten summoned, had great jury duty coverage. Everything's fine. 
and you can just go for as long as they need. If they need you for a 19-week murder trial, I'd have been fine. No problems. Yay, murder they, trial. They never want me. I always get excused. I And like, like one time I went and I sat there all day and no one got called back. And then the judge came out to like explain to us why they didn't send anyone back and then send everyone home. He's like, we, ne- we thought we needed a bunch of you, but it turns out that I just made a ruling and now they pled guilty. So see ya. Thanks for your service. Yeah. We got them. My wife got to do a, a trial. She had fun, like on a little three-day DUI. I was right up to the line on a pool contract. Like somebody put in a bad pool. I don't know what happened. It was about pools. They were asking yeah. us questions about being a contractor or or liking pools. <laughs> Discrimination how, against water. How do you feel about pools? pools? Yeah. Are you anti-pool or pro-pool? I'm pro-pool. For those, I, I was amateur pool, but I went pro. That's what I'd be like. Are we talking splish splash pool or felt pool? So, so you've never even been called? No, I've I've always wanted the chance to be on a jury, yeah, but only for a case that really mattered. Sure, but it's it's for the sheer fact I've watched too many true crime documentaries, Law and Order. Thanks. Ready to go. Well, yeah. I'm like, all right, I've seen the system and how much injustice there is because of stupid jurors. And I'm like, I would I would feel like I would be able to see through some bullshit. And if something like that was going on where there's jury manipulation, you know. Yeah, you'd just be the superhero. Movies, you'd be like the superhero. Yeah. It's yeah. <laughs> I'm like, that's the most realistic way you could be a superhero. Not being like the good guy with the gun kind of thing. Being the good guy on the jury. <laughs> Where you can really make a difference. Uh, I love how like your greatest white guy fantasy is just <laughs> that you're Peter Fonda in Twelve Angry Men. <laughs> you set him straight. Oh my god, he's your action heroes. He's your action hero icon. Not Bruce Willis. Not Liam Neeson. Peter Fonda. For the kids watching at home, uh, Twelve Angry Men is a movie that's in black and white. <laughs> And it's really it's easy to tell your who, time. The, who the 12 angry white men are. You should see it, though. Yeah. It's a good movie. It is. It's classic cinema. I think they showed it to us in eighth grade. Is that how you watched it? Like as a school movie? I think it was in high school. Yeah. It was in film class in high school. Yeah. So I had to be sophomore year. You took a film class in high school? Yeah. How'd and it was with one of the craziest teachers who was also one of my English teachers. Well, that makes sense. Yeah, she was hyped up on caffeine nonstop. She drank like a pot through every class. Sure, why not? Yeah. You just, I mean, this is 400 years ago when teachers were well paid. Oh, uh, yeah, they, they weren't well paid. They were paid even worse <laughs> back then, especially in my school system, even though it was one of the best in the state, and not, if not mm-hmm. the best in the state, which isn't really saying much. It's Kentucky. You don't really have a high bar. I mean, we're comparing Kentucky to Arizona. We're not swimming upstream towards each other. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. We're, we're both on a very downhill slope together. I think I think once upon a time they said that the Secretary of Education was asked what they thought of uh, Arizona being ranked 50th in education. And they said, well, at least we're not last. I mean, if you count Puerto Rico. I don't think anyone does. Will, will they ever become a state? They want to. They want, I, I hope they do. Make a mistake. I think everyone should be forced to be a state just to yeah. be stuck. Make Canada a state. They deserve it. They can't stay on the sidelines and point and laugh anymore. No, Canada doesn't deserve to suffer, and they wouldn't want it. Puerto Rico wants it. I say we should give it to them. I welcome them. I welcome anybody who wants it. To our union, but I feel sorry for them for joining. Yeah. Like, you guys have got it good. Stay stay where you're at. You're sovereign, but you got some of the benefits. I, I'm telling you. At least that's what I do. But what do I know? I think I heard that they don't have all the benefits anymore, and that's part of the problem. We, we, should, we should bring them in. Anyway. All right. Well, that's uh, two episodes in a row with a nice uh, unintended pause in the middle. But we're back, everybody. Technical difficulties on Zencaster side? I, I guess. Sure. 
I, Daddy Zencaster. I, I don't want to impugn them. It may it may well have been you. It wasn't me, but it may well have been you. It, well, yeah, it could have been me. It, it probably was me. I'll take the blame. It, when stuff goes wrong, chances are if I'm around, <laughs> it was me. That's just, that's fact. I have broken more things and made more people go, what the hell? Why am I around him? Do you break things? Unintentionally. Like, I'm, unintentionally. I'm accident prone. Yeah. Are you accident prone or do you just break things? Both. Both. Okay. Both. We talked yeah. a little bit about yeah. stitches last episode. Is that from your, your klutziness? Mine just sort of seemed to happen to me. I, it's a bit it's a bit of both because I try to do things that I'm not fully capable of and I have too much confidence in. Mm. So I I just go for it and then I face the consequences. Unfortunately. Mine just feel like bad luck. So yeah. It might come from living in cheap apartments, but there was a space in time where, and every time in front of my wife, I ripped the handle off of a microwave and an oven, like in the, in the period of about four months, like just using them normally, like just go to get the chicken nuggets out, grab the handle of the oven, pull down on the oven door and just come away with the handle. And she's standing there, (laughs) you know, when you like lift up something that you expect to be heavy and it's sort of. Yeah, it just comes up. And you're like, whoa. I'm expecting an oven door, and all I got was the plastic handle. So it's like, like comes on the swing back, and I end up holding it above my head like Conan. <laughs> He's like, oh. And then, so I had to like put the oven handle back on, and it was just like wiggled free. And then it couldn't have been, because it was the same apartment. So it, it had to be very similarly later. One of those microwaves where you don't push it. Because some microwaves have like the button and you push it and it pops out. It ejects. This was just the grab the handle and yank variety. It's old school. So I grab the, yeah, I grab the handle and yank. And I, the handle just comes off in my hand like a phone. Ring, 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 microwave phone. Lay off the steroids, Barry Bonds. I mean, that wasn't it, but I will. <laughs> I will continue to not do steroids. Yeah. To try and keep my appliances put together. Yeah, we'll just go with you have superhuman strength and you're just breaking appliances left and right. Don't let Kyle touch your appliance. He might pull the handle off. It's a risk you're willing to take if you let him touch your appliance. It's not a euphemism. Well, it could be as well. So, I think you could draw a bright line correlation between living somewhere cheap and having the appliances come apart in my hands. Because it hasn't happened in the last, you know, since I've owned the appliances and not just rented them with the apartment. Yeah, considering they've probably been used by dozens and dozens and dozens of people before you and dozens and dozens. That's a euphemism. 37 in a row. What is this a hotel microwave? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody gets a turn. That's what that plate's for in the so middle. In the middle. Gets yeah. a turn. It, it turns around. Everybody gets a turn on the oh. microwave plate oh, of love gosh. in the hotel. Beep, beep, beep. Don't, don't use hotel microwaves. You don't know what's been warmed in there. Hotel microwaves always come with like sort of the janky hotel where we're like, we didn't wash the sheets, but you get a microwave. When you get, when you get like a Sheraton, there's no microwave. Yeah. You got to go like down to the lobby. You got to go down level in order to have somebody entice you that there's a microwave in your room. The microwave in the room is, is a, a selling point for me. I will not stay at a hotel without a microwave. This is the sort of shit I think about. What is it about like the hotel, motel... Holiday Inn? Sort of market. The the market. The cheaper your hotel gets, they advertise more features that then the more expensive your hotel becomes, they take those features away again. Like when you're driving down the road and you see that janky ass like murder hut on the side of the road, they're like free HBO, microwave, Ice cold beer, whatever it is that it says on the thing, you know, with the one where it has like the light up vacancy, no vacancy sign. Everything's on the sign. You go drive down the road, you go to a Sheraton. You're like, hey, can I get the microwave and the free HBO that they were saying I could get for thirty nine ninety nine down the road? Nope, sir. We have Direct TV, but it's but but this one's this one's gonna be a hundred bucks a night. Yep. And somehow you're way happier with it, all because the door locks. And not necessarily any cleaner. It just appears cleaner. It's not visually disgusting 
that's that's the whole reason you pay for an upscale hotel. You hope that they have thorough cleaning, very thorough, Mr. Lebowski, very thorough. Do you road trip with the uh, with the hotels? It's changed a lot now with the app. You don't do no. that. No, I mean, if I go, if I'm going to go visit a city for a couple of days, I might stay there, but I don't do like cross country or like go and hop in places. Do you road trip? I mean, last last episode we talked about your your twelve hour jaunt to Destin. That's a road trip, but do you do a multi day cross country drive? No. Oh, never done it. Don't think I ever would. I, oh shit! Oh, I, at one point I would have, but yeah. no, not anymore. The season is set. Yeah, fourteen hours is the most I can be in a car, and after that, I don't want to drive another ten, twelve hours. I we like road trips. The, the Kyle family will do it. And we would drive, the routine family vacation is to drive from Phoenix to Wisconsin. Oh, Wisconsin. Outside Green Bay. So that's a, it's like a 38, 39 hour drive if you don't stop. Oh. Which I've done one time. And that trip was one of the best trips because, so we had three full-time drivers. And what I scheduled were meals. So I bought this book called like Road Trippers, like Road Food. (laughs) And I literally looked up like breakfast in New Mexico, lunch in Amarillo, Texas, dinner in St. Louis. And like I had it all planned out. And so we didn't stop, but then we'd stop for these meals. And so we'd stay for as long as you wanted at the meal and just enjoy. I mean, it was delicious food. Like this 24-hour diner that was across the street from the University of New Mexico that had... wow. All 100% homemade tortillas, and the whole thing was phenomenal. I remember the Frito pie in somewhere in Amarillo, Texas. Y'all making us hungry tonight. Make, I know. You're, you're making, yeah, you're making my mouth water. I can see it in your face, and I had a light dinner. I'm screwing it up. Yeah. But the reason I brought this up, anyway, I highly recommend road food, road trips. The reason I bring this up is to tell you the story of the worst hotel I've ever stayed in was in Amarillo, Texas, actually. We roll into Amarillo, and this is this is pre everything in an app, so we didn't actually know that there was no vacancy. And it turns out that there's some convention, like I don't know, like the Coffin Dealers of America or whatever, are meeting in Amarillo, Texas that day. So there are no yeah. hotels. We roll in to the La Quinta, which I think they say Spanish for free internet. <laughs> that's what that's what they say. And everyone's standing in the lobby. There's nothing. Nobody's there. And the person at the front desk is like calling other hotels to try and get it to work. You can tell how old this story is. I think the story is 17 years old. Anyway, she says, Oh, they said the civic center Inn has rooms. Just go out down the road. She gives us the directions. So we go to the civic center Inn in Amarillo, Texas. I hope it's burned down by now. Cause this is not, this is an anti plug. <laughs> go to this hotel, book it right now on Priceline. Yeah. I don't, I don't think you can. On Verbo. We get there. It's immediately obvious why they have vacancies. But we're there with a bunch of people in nice clothes in the exact same situation that we're in. So the lobby's now filled filled with people who are presenting that they can very easily afford the Civic Center in. He charges us $40. And I think he knew that he was ripping us all off because we were on, like, you just slide him 220s. Yeah. So he goes, uh, I'll never forget this look on his face. I I remember my children being born, and I will never forget the look on this man's face. He goes, do you want the wake-up call? And I said, no, I'll just uh, just set the alarm. I just, matter of fact, and he looks at me, and he goes, (laughs) there's no alarm. (laughs) Just like, there's no clock in the room. Oh. Okay. Okay. Uh... Yep. The room is, the room's clean, right? Threadbare, but clean. We had... We had a fine night. Uh, during the night, I do believe there was enough police activity that I could safely say that another room was raided. I don't know why or what happened. We stayed in our room. We got down on the floor. Well, there was a lot of boot stomping and shouting. Or you wanted an episode of Cops and didn't know it? Maybe I was. Maybe I was. But the greatest thing that I saw that day is thinking outside the box. We wake up the next morning. We go down. Everybody's leaving because we all got up at 7 o'clock in the morning to get the fuck out of this hotel because we don't want to be there anymore. I see a guy on his ground floor room just 
walking his Honda Goldwing backwards out the door of his room. <laughs> he was not going to trust it in the parking lot all night long. <laughs> so he just parked his Honda in his hotel room, went to sleep, woke up the next morning, just, yep, no problem. I don't see anything and, wrong here. Nope. And that worked perfectly for him. So that's the... That's my that's my road trip hotel story. I, I stayed in a, a shit hotel in Memphis. It was yeah. the worst hotel I've ever stayed in my life. I went down for three eleven day to see my, one of my favorite bands, three eleven. Oh, and they were playing at this like civic center in a rundown part of Memphis, and it just you, you could tell this place hadn't been used in a few years. <laughs> and we got there and we stayed the night and woke up so we could party all day. And the minute I woke up, I felt like somebody had punched me in the face. Like from the air conditioner, there was mold coming out of it. And I'm allergic to mold. So think, we went I out. Think, I think everyone is, right? Isn't that just called like mold will kill you? Oh, yeah, I guess. every Yeah, because it'll kill you. Yeah. Well, I don't, I don't know. Well, my, Maybe my yours buddy, is worse. My, yeah, my buddy had no effect on him oh, whatsoever. Because okay. we split the room. He had no problem whatsoever the next day so i thought it was just my allergies took my allergy meds we go out we start partying as the day goes on i got sicker and sicker and then we go back to stay at the hotel again because we're all messed up and the next morning i felt 10 times worse Ugh. it was one of those like you said on the side of the road janky ass anything in Ugh. memphis that was remotely close that wasn't like a 45 minute drive from where we had to go was already sold out when we tried to get it or was so expensive we couldn't afford it at the time because we were still college kids. What day, like what day is 311 day? March 11th, 311. Oh, oh. Uh, uh. That explains why everybody knew when it was. Exactly. Nobody had to be like, when is it? The only thing is it was the first time it wasn't in New Orleans. So a lot of people took advantage of it being outside of there and it being cheaper than normal jokes on them. That was the shittiest hotel I've ever been in, but not one of the shittiest experiences I had, at least not as of late. So this goes back to what we were talking about at the beginning. Everything is cyclical. I swear. Everything is cyclical. We get back to things. Glad we, you're we not go dead. Off. Yeah. We, we go off on tangents. I'm dumb, which the rest of the story will, will further prove. Bring it on. But I have I have somewhat of a redemption at the end, so I can't really bitch too much. But so I was talking about Derby been at this Derby party. Yeah. I'm betting on races during the day. Okay. Just a dollar here, two dollars there. Derby comes around. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna bet fifty dollars total, be done with it for the day. If I hit something, great. Because I hit a super effect of the year before and didn't realize it until a week later when I just happened to look at my twin spires app and see that I had a deposit of $10,000. And I was like, what the fuck happened? Whoa. Oh, wow. So I'm thinking, Hey, maybe if I do the same thing I did last year, put yeah. a little bit on it and just do a couple of $2 bets here, dollar bet here on some straights and maybe a box sure. call it a day. I'll be good. Easy. So I did some and I still had like 20 bucks that I was going to spend left. And jokingly, I just picked four random horses, 21, three, 10, 13 I was going to do a $20 straight and 21 was the long shot. And I was like, Hey, if it hits, this will be ridiculous. But I'm like, there's no way in hell to hit. So I showed my buddy and I'm like, should I just hit it? Cause they were getting ready to put all the horses in the gate. And I think it was three was getting like a little buck wild, which is why they call it buck wild horses bucking. They're getting wild. Sure. That's your lesson for the day. Now kids with your slang. So I'm like, should I bet, should I put the bet in? And he goes, or you can just give me 20 bucks and you know, it'll be the same as what you're about to do. You're just going to throw it away. And I was like, eh, yeah, you're right. And as soon as that happened, I hit my phone, put it in my pocket. They were off. I sat down and I thought that the race finished 12, three, 10, 13, and that I had it. And I looked out on my phone and he was, I look over at my buddy and he was like, oh man, oh man. And I'm like, what? He was like, that was 21. It's like, no, it was 12. And he's like, I'm sorry. I just cost you probably like 700 grand. And I'm like, no, 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 that that didn't happen. That wasn't, no. He's like, I wouldn't even know what to do right now if I had 700 grand. I'm like, I, I'm not even thinking about it. And the payout was 321000 on a 
dollar bet. And I was going to do a $20 bet. On that, on that horse that actually, because the horse that won the Derby was the last place horse, right? I watched the, I watched the footage. Yeah, just, he it, was last until the very end, and he just yeah. booked it and went. Mm. If you haven't seen the footage of the Kentucky Derby in 2022, get the aerial shot because that horse, spoiler alert, the horse that's projected to finish last starts in the back, yeah. but then doesn't finish in the back, and it's pretty incredible to watch. And one of the favorites led all the way up until then and almost finished in the back. Actually did finish in the back, finished last. So when we started this show, you told us two stories that were about maybe 20 grand worth of of failed winnings. And then you're ending the show by telling us that you could have bankrolled the entire show if your buddy hadn't talked you out of it. Yep. Yeah, okay, cool. Cool. Yep. Yep. But uh, hey, like I said, I won last year. That's the most money I've ever won on a bet. Or gambling of any kind. Yeah, great. So I was thinking, hey, let's roll the dice or pick the ponies. Pick or the how. ponies, yeah, that's what they say. Mm-hmm. I, I came close, but close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. I, which, shouldn't horseshoes count in this? Shouldn't the fact that I was about to place it, that I could be like, no, I was getting ready to place it. It wouldn't let me, and it, it, it was a glitch. Yeah, I don't think that works with bookies. It doesn't work with bookies. No. It especially doesn't work with the actual tracks online app. No, think, nah. no, they don't. They don't care. But I, I, I almost cost them. Speaking of the Kentucky Derby, uh, you told me something off air that we have to debate. You told me that I'm bringing it back to the Kentucky Derby. You said you don't like horsey sauce. No. From Arby's. No, no. It's awesome. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be mad at you, but it's the best. It's objectively the best sauce at any fast food restaurant. No. Zaxby's Insane Sauce and their ranch. We don't have that. How can a ranch be better than, or are you mixing it? You don't, well, I mean, you eat the wing and then you take your fry, you dip it in the ranch. Yes. Fries and ranch, that's a good yeah. combo. Unless it's you delicious. have horsey sauce, in which case that's better. I, I mean, if we're talking Same. packet condiments that you squirt out like that, Texas Pete. Packet what that squirt out? Packet condiments that squirt. <laughs> You, you rip the tip and you squirt it. That's the wrong way to use condiment. That's that's how you use packet condiments. Oh, I guess that is okay. That is how you use condiment. Yeah, okay, got it. Only at a restaurant. The other when you're using condiments at home, but not in the kitchen. I mean, maybe in the kitchen. You could be but, in the kitchen, but maybe. But the ones that you use on your food, but you shouldn't use the other on your food. You should not use the other on your food whatsoever. No. But the, the ones that you use on your food, like that you get at a restaurant, sauces, not that kind of sauce. The sauce that you the, – okay. I was going to say edible sauce, sauce. but no, oh. not that. Nope. I mean there's I, – I have put myself in a hole that I can't dig out of. So I'm just going to try to go all the way through until I see daylight on the other side. That's also not how it works. <laughs> Squeezable. Yes. Packet. Condiments, yes, that you get at a restaurant, uh huh, to flavor your food, uh huh, yep. Out of those, if we're including a name brand sauce that is not produced by that restaurant but is available at restaurants, oh my god, there's so many qualifications on this. We how, you can't just say, oh, horsey sauce is good. It's Texas Pete, Texas Pete. What's Texas Pete? It's a hot sauce. Oh, I. You can get it at Chick Fil A. I don't. Uh, well, I don't. I don't go to Chick Fil A that often because not. Listen, they've contributed to some weird shit. They have. Okay, I will admit that. All right, but I don't boycott them because of that. I boycott them because they're really hard to turn past the median into. And then I tell people that I don't eat at Chick Fil A because they've donated to some weird shit. But just between you, me, and our audience of millions, it's because it's really hard to make that turn. <laughs> Yeah, there I know exactly what you're talking about. It's something about their placement. They want it yeah. to be difficult. They they almost want to trap you there. Mm-hmm. It's it's odd. It's like the church of fast food. They're it just is. trying to get you in and that you make you be stuck there. It's Jesus chicken. It is it is Jesus chicken. That's why it's so delicious. That brine is like holy water at a church, but it's for chicken. I don't think they have you sit in it for three days at church. I mean, that's why they're, they're going back to like the whole Jesus three day resurrection. They put the chick, they put the dead chicken in there 
and brine it. And when they bring it out, they resurrect it <laughs> and fry it into your delicious goodness for your enjoyment. And that is why it is so good. That is a secret recipe. It's not actually that they use brine. It's because it's blessed and they leave it in there for three days. <laughs> The other thing, the thing that I, this maybe they stopped doing this because it's been a long time since I've been to a Chick-fil-A and only for the reasons that I said earlier. The last time that I went, do they still put the description of the customer at the bottom of your receipt? Do you know what I'm talking about? Description of the customer at the bottom. The last time I went to a Chick-fil-A, they brought the food to the table and they like left the receipt. And at the bottom of my receipt, it had my name. It said Kyle. But then underneath that, it said like red shirt. Oh, yeah. I've seen that if you dine so in. Could, like, I am shocked, and maybe I just don't read enough internet, that there hasn't been something horrific in that customer description slot that has made it onto the internet. Karen. Yeah. But, I mean, that would be a person's name. <laughs> it, would, it, would, it would be terrible. They were just like, what's your name? Stacy. And then the description says Karen. Karen. Uh, I'm sorry. Oh, I know what you meant. I want to talk to your manager. Yeah. I mean, just one of those things where it feels like you're setting those teenagers up for disaster, that one of them would type something inappropriate. I don't think a Chick-fil-A. That somewhere else, if they do that, which I've, I've seen it happen at other places too, there's another fast food place that's local here called Jaggers that does burgers and fried chicken sandwiches. And I think their chicken sandwich is better than Popeye's and Chick-fil-A. Might be a little biased just because it's local here, but Popeye's yeah. good. But I'm I'm willing to try every chicken sandwich to find out. Popeye's pretty good. You can only get Jaggers right now in Louisville and in Indianapolis. There's only two places, but it's owned by Texas Roadhouse, so it will be expanding. The other reason why Popeye's chicken sandwich is better because it's a right hand turn to get in there. <laughs> I I like your reasoning. Uh huh. I like that is it's it's the most logical reason to mm -hmm. dislike a fast food place because it's supposed to be fast food. Yeah, it's a right hand turn. And then if you're coming from the other direction, there's a roundabout to get you in and out. There's no median bullshit. You just the left hand turn that you make is a very and I like a roundabout. You have do you have roundabouts in, in uh, Louisville? Uh, not in Louisville that I can think of, but there is one in Lexington that was just put there about 10 or so years ago. And there was all kinds of clusterfuckery when it first opened. But then another one that is a viral video online, I think it was in Hebron, Kentucky. I might be completely off. But it was another kind of rural city in Kentucky. They opened up a roundabout and they did a video and it's just the people going the wrong way oh. and people stopping and almost hitting each other. Yeah, so we don't do roundabouts well. We They're putting in more here, and they're putting them in, like, pretty busy intersections. So now we're getting, like, two-lane roundabouts where you, like, yeah. get in the center. It's getting a little European vacation Chevy Chase. But, I mean, they're easy to navigate. Uh, but if you're coming the wrong direction, you want to go to Popeye's, roundabout, got you in, easy. I'll bet you, wild speculation, Popeye's makes 20% more. They make 100% more for me. I bet you they make 20% more because... You can make a left-hand turn through the roundabout, no problem. I don't know. There's a cult following for Chick-fil-A. Pun intended. <laughs> well, <laughs> besides that, besides being the hardcore right-wing Baptist. I think they have, I think they use both wings. They, I don't know. I, I don't think they use. Do you think they throw away all the left wings? They're that hardcore? All the left wings. That's That's exactly what I meant by that. Was their their hardcore right wing of the chicken uh -huh. because it tastes better? It, yeah, it's like just the, scientific fact. Like which I mean, which twist tastes better, right? Well, yeah. I mean, and, and besides that, I think I think I may have just figured out why Chick Fil A's do their parking lot and the way that you have to enter the parking lot to make it so difficult is because it's something to do with their system that makes them more efficient. So. So you figured out that by making it wildly inefficient to get inside of a Chick-fil-A, it makes them more efficient? Because they have such huge rushes. So it kind of filters cars better so it's not literally wrapped around the building. So as people come in, they can get out still. I think that's what it is, is that, that 40 cars enter and 21 cars abandon this tomfuckery. It's, it's Thunderdome. 
Yeah, they serve 19 sandwiches and they go, oh, well, 40 people came in and they're all gone. So we beat the rush. <laughs> I mean, I cannot think of a time while they're open Sundays. There, there's nobody there on Sundays. It's weird. It's weird. But any other time of day, it, it doesn't matter when, there is always a line at Chick-fil-A. Always. Like, it's a constant. There's always two or three cars and there's people that are at the drive through all, all the way up at the window constantly. Any Chick-fil-A I drive through, at least in Louisville. We have the In-N-Out in Arizona. Do you have the In-N-Out in Kentucky? We do not. I've never even had In-N-Out. I've heard glorious it's, things. It's like, it's fine. Is it good? Yes, it's very good. Is it cheap? Yes, it's cheaper than average. And they'll put together a nice sandwich for you. Animal style. Whenever you come into, in, when you come into contact with an In-N-Out burger, just remember Kyle said animal style, you're in business. They are known for their huge lines as well. Not worth it for the huge line. They don't have a convoluted return to Thunderdome process that you're thinking. So they just put up some cones and, and it just snakes back and forth across a parking lot. And that's it. I, I don't know how to I don't know how to explain Chick Fil A. There is some. It's got to be something on a psychological level. That's the only thing I can think of. They're they're doing it to mind fuck you. That's exactly what they're doing. They're in your head. They're manipulating you to come in. They're like, oh, this is a challenge. Not me. I I am gonna no. get my chicken or or it's a test. It's like, do you really want it? They put the meat in there, and that's why I don't go. And you fail the test. They put the meat in. They're like, will you come join us, brother? Join the chicken fold. Chicken fold. And you're like, no, no, there's a median. No, I will not come for your Jesus chicken. No. The line must be drawn here. In the median. <laughs> no further. I can, I can go with a roundabout and get me some Popeyes. I cannot cross that median unless I'm in a Jeep. Bingo. And no, when I say the median, there's a left-hand turn cutout in the median. Oh. I still don't use it. Oh. It's a pain in the ass. Still don't like it. So that because I gotta I gotta wait for the oncoming traffic and there's a freeway behind you and nobody wants to let you. Through. It's it's horrible. I don't go. See, but I tell people it's because they vote they donate to political causes I don't support. And the left hand turn and only our listeners know my secret. If it's an available left hand turn and there's no median, you have to like do do go off road and on. I would that would make me want to go even more for for the thrill to cut across. It's like playing Frogger. It's real life Frogger. If you have secrets that you keep. And call them moral choices. Email us at Dev and Kyle S T A Dev and Kyle Start the Apocalypse at gmail.com. Hey Dev, guess what? Oh uh-huh. yeah. Please laugh. I was reminded of this joke by another joke. Those are the best. Do you want do you want the the reminder joke and then they're both short. I want the reminder joke so I can see why it spawned the other joke. Or should it go reminder joke and then the joke? The the reminder joke is worse, so we'll go reminder okay. joke first. Okay. So polar bear walks into a bar and order and polar bear says, I'll take a rum and coke. The bartender says, Why the big pause? The polar bear says, Well these I was born with these. <laughs> But, uh, but that joke reminded me of another great joke that takes place in a bar. So a rabbi walks into a bar with a frog on his shoulder. The bartender says, where'd you get that? And the frog says, in Brooklyn, they're everywhere. Oy vey. We are, we are not kosher, <laughs> evidently. This is a non-kosher show. No, we are kosher. I'm being told we're kosher by the producers. The produ- Oh, great. Yeah. Great. I haven't had, I haven't had milk or meat. On my plate this afternoon. I had both. We're part of at best. Yeah. 50-50, it counts. That's that's all you got to have is 50-50. It's something that I want to share that I I'm, i don't know if many people know about, but they're going to know about it because I'm about to tell them. And okay. there is a major motion picture that is coming out about this story. And I can't remember who is... It's one of the blonde, famous actors. It, it's not. I don't think it's. I don't. The, they all. Do you know how like Katy Perry and Zoe Deschanel look like they're clones almost? There's no. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. They. they, they uh-huh. it, it, it's, I have a hard time sometimes differentiating. You can't them. say that all white girls look alike on this show, Dev. They do. 
they do. At least okay. these three. Uh, like Charlize Theron, it's not her. Uh, okay. Sometimes, and Rachel McAdams is kind of in that one. And then I can't think of this other girl. She's like, she looks like a combination of the two of them. She was on 30 Rock. Oh my God, why can't I think I of I never watched 30 Rock. Liz Lemon? No. Elizabeth Banks. Elizabeth Banks, yes. Yes. She is doing, she's directing this film, and it is about Cocaine Bear. Uh, the audio broke up. It sounded like you said Cocaine Bear. Cocaine Bear, a.k.a. Pablo Escobar. The fuck is that? It is a true story. It happened. It fucking better be with a name like that. It, it's, it's one of those Ripley's Believe It or Not things, but it's actually real and documented, not one of those, oh, is it really real, or is it one of those they're just yanking my leg? So Cocaine Bear was it's like almost 200-pound bear who found cocaine in the Chattahoochee National Forest and, <laughs> and decided he was Tony Montana and snorted like four grams. Tony Tennessee, yeah. I think is yeah. what you have to call him. Yeah, right? Tony Tennessee <laughs> and decided he was just going to ha- have a... A little ski party and by himself in the forest and sorted it up. How did so? A- you're, I'm sure you're asking how the hell did this happen, right? It, this is this uh, is where it gets even crazier. So the guy, okay, good. It, he drops seventy five pounds of cocaine out the of there. No, this there's this guy. Uh, his I can't remember his full name. Last name's Thornton. He was a cop. And then he became a lawyer and then he became a drug runner. He bought a plane. He had a Cessna sure. and he That's was the career path. That most of us yeah. Do. And he was like flying Coke back and forth and he crashed in, I think it was Knoxville or Nashville. One of the Vils. And they found his dead body. Yeah. They found his dead body. It was in Tennessee and they found his dead body in a driveway and they knew he was carrying cocaine, and they were searching for it, and it was 75 pounds that he had kicked out of the plane. Where was the plane? They found his dead body in a driveway. Where's his plane? It, it crashed nearby. I, don't, I can't remember where it was. So he just jumped out? Yeah. I, I'm going off this story vaguely, so I might be missing some key things. So, Like a plane? Yeah. Like where the, yeah. I'm missing the plane. They're missing it. I, I don't know. All I know is they were like they followed the flight path and they found his body. So I th- I guess they followed the plane and it crashed. But the only, only thing I remember reading about was where they found his body was in a driveway <laughs> in Knoxville or Nashville. And I can't remember which city. So the seventy five pounds of cocaine falls in the forest. This bear finds it, overdoses. Hey boo boo. They find <laughs> find the bear and the coke, and then they do an autopsy and study on the bear. And somehow or another, the bear ends up getting taxidermied. <laughs> and <laughs> country music legend Waylon Jennings comes into the picture. Okay. Buys this some bitch. <laughs> puts it in his house. And then it, it got like passed around, I think. And somehow this local, it started out as a t-shirt shop in Lexington called Kentucky for Kentucky. And then they started making other apparel and they make some crazy slogan shirts. They opened their store to sell all this Kentucky made swag called the Kentucky fun mall. And then they bought Pablo Escobar, cocaine bear and have him on display. They bought the, whole bear. They bought the bear and they have him on display at the Kentucky fun mall. Okay. Yes. So there you have it. The story of, Cocaine Bear, the pride of the bluegrass. You, and they're turning this into a movie. Yes, they're turning into a movie. I know that for a fact. Which part is the movie part? I, I'm not sure. I guess the... Does the bear come in at the beginning or the end? The end. It has to be at the end. It has to be the story I guess of... like an origin story. Yeah, it has to be like the story of the guy becoming a, a cop and then a lawyer and then a drug runner. And then his de- his demise at the end is how Cocaine Bear comes to to be rising from the ashes, as they say. Yeah, and, or you could like the beginning could be like the first thirty minutes. Do we don't want to give this away for free? No, we don't want to do this workshop. Thing. Well, I mean, 
it's let Eliz- Elizabeth Banks. If you need a script, call us. We know the story. Oh yeah, I know the story well enough. I remember like the gist of it, like the important pieces. I remember that, but sure, I don't remember all the gory details or all the the powdery details. I guess. Are there any like like did the bear go on a, like a, a coke fueled party? Rampage? That's what I want to know. They, that's what the film should be. It should be just this crazy, psychedelic, hour and a half long yeah. stretch out of this bear's cocaine trip in the forest and what happened. Like the bear runs into a deer named Bambi Herd. It should be animated, like Pixar animated, and have Seth Rogen and what's his name? His buddy. Oh, my God. He's got the brother. He's always he's in Pineapple Express with him. Why can't I not think James Franco? Yeah, the Franco, the Franco. Yeah, I think he got canceled. I don't think James Franco got canceled. Do, I think I so. missed out on that. I think he's inappropriate with people. I don't know. I'm not endorsing James Franco on this podcast just because I think I heard that he was kind of a douchebag. If you think that he's a douchebag, email us. Yeah, at Dev and Kyle sta at gmail Let us know what you think, or don't, and then we'll just tell you what we think you think. So you you might as well tell us. I don't know anything about. I know even less about this next story than you know about Pablo Escobar. I heard a story that the actual human Pablo Escobar owned exotic animals. Yes, but then released all of them. The hippos. And so apparently there's a hippo colony. You so you know this. There's a hippo colony wherever it is that Pablo lived, and that's all I know about that. Yeah, and they're slowly dying out. But they got they it, they kept breeding. It got so large that they couldn't really contain them, <laughs> and they're just messing everything up in the ecosystem. They've attacked people. They've killed people. I believe I might be exaggerating on that, but it makes it. Did cool. you know that the hippop- hippopotamus can run faster than a person? Yes. Did you know that a hippopotamus can swim faster than a person? Yes. It almost looks like they're running in water. I've, I saw a video of it chasing a boat that was going like 35 miles an hour and it was staying right on top of it. So if you're in a triathlon against a hippopotamus, you have to make up all that time on the bicycle. That is a good little, yeah. That's that's how we're going to end the show, Dave. that in. I like that. Yep. Didn't even, Much like the packet condiment. Yeah. I didn't even use didn't one. Even, you need to use a packet condiment, a, a squirtable packet, packeted condiment. Listen, kids, unless you're in a healthy relationship, always use condiments. It brings more flavor to the table. (laughs) We got to quit while we're ahead, Deb. That's what she said. Bye-bye, everybody. See you next week. Dev and Kyle Start the Apocalypse is brought to you every other week with a full archive available at devandkyle.com. The Apocalypse theme and other music in the show is written and performed by Chase Noseworthy. He's Chase Noseworthy on YouTube or at Noseworthy Chase on Twitter. All graphic design for Dev and Kyle Start the Apocalypse has been created by Dead Vision. Find her work on Twitter and Insta at xdadotter and book her immense talents at xdadotter.com. Audio engineering provided by Cassandra Umsong. She can make you sound even better than Devin Kyle because you'll provide much better raw materials. Get in touch with her on Twitter at Coffee with Coom. That's Coffee with C O U M. Dev and Kyle support artists and creatives of all types. Exposure is for film, artists need compensation. If you're interested in becoming an Apocalypto to help keep supporting all of the artists who make Dev and Kyle sound passably professional, please consider becoming a sustaining patron at patreon.com slash devandkyle. Show notes, transcripts, and any other information from this episode should be available at devandkyle.com if Dev and or Kyle did their job. Fingers crossed. Finally, deeply and sincerely, 
Dev and Kyle think that you are a wonderful person who deserves love and compassion. We hope our small gift of what we consider interesting or entertaining has made your day even the tiniest bit better. Thank you for liking or subscribing in your favorite podcast app. And if you think others may want to know about this show, consider leaving a review in that same podcast app. It really helps us spread the word. Thank you.